Oh no, that's a not a good place to be, my friend. So this is the Mavic 4 Pro and this is the gauntlet. The gauntlet has four stages in it. First off, this tree tunnel. This thing will test its ability to, well, stay in the tunnel. After that, we've got a bit of a transitionary phase. This is one that is seemingly easy, but has brought down a lot of drones over the years. After that, we get to the high speed section, a big wide open area where we can get this thing really cooking and flying around us in all sorts of interesting orbits, including doing a little bit of a slalom course through some trees. Now, if the drone is still alive from there, we will dive into the deep dark woods, a section that has killed a lot of drones, including its most recent sibling, the DJI Flip. Now, the reigning champion of the gauntlet right now is the Hover Air Pro drone, followed very closely by the DJI Neo. But the Mavic 4 has a secret weapon. It has the most advanced obstacle avoidance, according to DJI anyways, that will be able to detect all sorts of tiny little branches, even in the shitty areas of the deep dark woods. Now there's one more really important note here. It's that I paid for this thing myself with my own hard cold cash. And I also of course bought the care refresh package because this is the gauntlet. We, we know how this is probably gonna end. With that, let's get rolling. Now, when it comes to the configuration of the after track, two things to note. A uh, one, I've set it to be bypass as opposed to brake. I do not have a near ground flight option enabled, which lets it go below two meters. I'm basically two meters tall and anything that I go through means it's at least two meters in height because I can't fit through that. Make sense? Good. Okay, I don't normally start in the middle of the woods. I usually start at the start of the tunnel, but there's a guy there and I just don't like passing people. Okay, we'll go ahead and select ourselves. We will choose after track and we'll just simply fall from behind for now. Here we roll. Okay, so far we have started. It is following us. That is a good, good start to things. Let's see if we can get down there before we uh, find any people. Okay. It's definitely behind us a little bit further than I would have thought it'd be. I thought it'd be a little bit closer to this juncture. Um, I like the smaller drones tend to be much closer. This one is just giving me a lot more space and really kind of weaving all over the place like this just got way more movement than it needs to at this point uh i'm gonna let it pop out into the trees over there for a second let's see if we can do that here we go we'll tell it to get over there be able to find this way around there good job around the tree though oh, that's a little tight a little tight buddy now quick note if you are finding this video interesting funny or useful or something just simply watch it all the way through. That is the only thing the YouTube gods care about these days and it really does help out this video and the channel quite a bit. Okay, it's got a dip under these trees. Oh, that's a bad for you, my friend. Give it a bit more flexibility on the range it can go out there. 20 meters if it wants to. That might make the difference there. Sturm, come on. Oh, tree branch. Just died. It got some green there, tree trunk. Come on, there's a whole giant section. You can get out there. You can do it. You can do it. Come on. Oh, don't be such a wimp. All your little friends do it, no problem. Big boy in town and, and you can't get out there. Oh man. Okay, well, there ends the tree tunnel. Let's go ahead and uh, pop out into this transitionary phase here. Oh, YOLO, why are you going up there, buddy? Stay behind me now. Let's get you behind me because you're just doing dangerous stuff there. Okay, we're gonna start bringing up the speed a little bit. That previous section was painfully slow compared to what I want to ride at, but we'll get rolling here. Let's, uh, for funsy, let's go ahead and bring it out up in front of us. Let's see it rotate around. Got a very light breeze today, nothing much though. But like this kind of stuff should be no problem. I'm going 20 kilometers an hour. This drone can go far, far faster than that. There we go, thank you. See, now you're listening. No, never mind. you're not listening anymore. Okay, so it's gonna track from behind for now. Once we get to the faster sections, we'll see if it'll uh, get down a little bit lower and kind of follow us. There we go, there's no interference whatsoever. Who are we kidding here? I'm using the DJI RC2 as opposed to the RC Pro 2, simply because it's easier to handle on the bike. Oh, we'll lose me the tracking, we'll lose me. There we go, good job. Okay, kudos there. Now, it's sort of made its own bed on this one. Help, come on, come on, find me, find me. Now, you're totally not gonna find me now. So I'm gonna manually get it up here and set it up for the high speed section. And normally I do the high speed section on this little sidewalky bike path thing right here, 
Uh, but this has got construction up there. So we're gonna go across the field here and do it on the next road over to those windmills. I'm gonna do a POI here and let it rotate around to the left. There we go. Now, of course, right now it can't do that, but once I get going over here, well, it shouldn't be able to do that anyways. It's got trees there. Uh, I'm gonna do a shortcut here in about two seconds. That's why I got a gravel bike to uh, the Aviolo. Hopefully this isn't too soft. Good, come on. Here we go. Now, at this point, it should start rotating around me. Shouldn't have any problems doing that. It's a little bit of wind out here, not much, but otherwise there's no obstacles. And it's doing a good job with that. I'm, I'll bring up the speed once we get on the flats out there. Once we get, sorry, on the uh, pavement out there. I'm surprised though it's not able to rotate around me right now. It should be really easy. Only going 24 kilometers an hour. So while it's doing a fine job tracking me, it's not doing what I told it to do, which is to do orbits around me, which is too bad. Okay, so now it is time for the fast tracking section. All right, now I've got a little bit of a headwind today, uh, so we'll make the best of this. I'm gonna keep in orbit mode because that's the most fun, to be honest. And generally speaking, the goal is to see how long it'll keep orbiting for until it falls in behind. It's set for a fast orbit right now. You can see it's off the side. We're just cruising through 25 right now. We'll get up here to speed in a second. The headwind's gonna slow me down more than it. There we go, bring it up. Going to 30, 35. Come on, little buddy. And now it's just holding on, staying behind me. This should not be that hard, my friend. 36. I can get there. You can certainly get there. Almost at 40. Now, I'll point out that I've fracked objects far faster than 40 kilometers an hour. Some boats and stuff, speed boats flying along without any problem with active track. But the orbiting here just isn't working. Let me slow down and show you how slow we have to go to get this to do its thing. Now I rack a 20 to do an orbit, which I mean, fine, I guess, but not really what I was looking for. If we uh, go ahead and bring down the altitude for fun, not below two meters, but we're in a fast orbit right now and it's really struggling to do that. Now it's time for the tree weaving. Just gonna stick it out to the right here. Come on, there we go. And I want it to simply track me as I go down this section. It's not complicated. Just simply track me as I go down the section from the right. It is not complicated. Be there, not there. Ah, oh, you have one job. Maybe I'll move it out a little bit further forward. See if it does that instead. Come on, little buddy. Get out there. Hey, there we go. Making progress, making progress making there we go that's a little better that's what i want good job now bring up the speed here 35 a little bit of side wind here 39 good job little buddy now this is a cool shot right this is what you pay the money for and this is all of the main lens now i'm gonna stop real quick see how fast it is stop Let's go ahead and do normal active track now towards the deep, dark woods. The biggest challenge that bigger drones have in here is really the stopping distance. Uh, so though this one should see all the twigs and stuff like that of these trees, but it's really gonna be whether or not I can stop in time when we get going faster. And we're gonna start off pretty slow uh, because right now it's gonna require to basically go below. Hurry, right, let's scoot through here. I'll see what happens. Okay, good job. It went below the floor, the, the two meter floor there. Good job. Come on, little buddy, catch back up. Uh, I'm going like, you know, six kilometers an hour right now. So we're gonna go very fast, but I'll give it its, its chance here. It was at this moment, by the way, the DJI Flip right here killed itself back a few months ago uh, when it went skyward for no obvious reason. So good job, Drone, you're still with us. Okay, we're out with this little momentary opening and then we're gonna get things a little bit messier. I'm proud of you. You're doing much better than I thought. Yeah, it's slow. This is gonna be tricky here. It's gotta go below its uh, two meter gap there. We gonna do it? It's thinking about it. It did it, good job. <laughs> I'm impressed. I am impressed. Now, I'm not going very fast, but if I was running, this would be totally fine from a speed standpoint. 
right? This would be catching up. It's not doing as good a job, of course, as these smaller drones in terms of having that right behind you perspective. It's definitely lagging quite a bit here. Um, I don't know, I make a turn here, probably gonna do it in, but I had to go somewhere. Oh, now where are you going? Whoa, dude, no, no way. That was totally cheating. You were totally looking at the remote for that. That, I applaud your cheating. Now at this point, we're gonna transition to a deeper, darker section of the woods, but I wanna kinda of point out a couple quick things on the different zoom options. There is the option to use a 2.5X lens uh, in active track mode. You can see that right here. This is useful when you wanna be either higher above the action away from people, or shots like this, where I'm on the other side of the trees entirely, quite a bit further away, and this is an amazingly cool shot, especially as I get up to speed. And it's doing a really good job tracking me through the trees here. Again, this is like exactly what you wanna use that 2.5X lens for. That's said one thing to keep in mind is that the 6x lens does not work with actor track you can see this right here as soon as you tap no matter your resolution or your frame rate uh, it will not work with actor track it will however work with a spotlight mode spotlight mode means that you are controlling the drone's uh, position in the sky but the camera is staying focused on you you can see this right here in spotlight mode i simply put the drone in one place but the camera is following me uh, you can of course manually control the drone like you see here uh, while it tracks something else this is a super useful mode, but it is not active track. Anyways, time to go down into the much darker woods. Here we go. This is, <laughs> let's see. This is like the ultimate definition of the deep dark woods. There's no way. What? It, oh, it's, it's like, no, no, dude. No, what are you, who are you kidding? I'm not going down that hole. <laughs> let's see if I can get it to pop in manually. Oh, it's upset about battery. You know, I'm moving it in manually here. Okay, can you do this, dude? I mean, this is, again, like, just to see how tight this is, it barely fits between those trees. It won't even go manually through here. It's also really upset about his battery. Okay, I kind of want to try if we can get past this initial tree. I think we can do it. I'm going to switch batteries here. You see, the problem is this tree right here. This gives me at most 30 centimeters on each side, uh, basically like a foot on each side. But I think once we make it past that, it can do a little dodge, a little weave, and then it's there. Let's do this. Okay, here we go. Night and slow. Come on, endure. Woo, the tight one. You can do it. Come on. You got, oh, that did tell me. Oh no, that's a, not a good place to be, my friend, but Told myself. I would have not have selected that route. Just me. But you do you. You're still alive, so I'm not gonna I'm not be giving too hard of time for that. Right now. Okay. You're doing this. This is gonna be a tricky tree right here. That's gonna be come. I don't know what you're gonna do about there. You're gonna copy this something stupid like last time. I'll just stay here while you think about this. What's your plan? Are you gonna YOLO it? You can do it. You don't want to lose me, do you? Come on. Oh, come on. Your older, like, Mavic 3, when it first came out, would have totally YOLO'd that gap. Like, just would have sped up and gone for it. You are much more sensitive. You have to turn off obstacle avoidance to do this. Dangerous game to play. We'll slide through here. Okay. Immediately turn that thing back on again. Bypass. Find me, check, actor track. Now we're good. The rest is frilled pretty straightforward, I think. Oh man. Okay, and this is probably the biggest difference between this larger drone and the smaller drones like the Harbor Airs and the DJI Neil, etc. Those smaller drones are built for not caring about obstacles. In fact, most of them don't even have any obstacle avoidance at all, 
they just simply fly right through this and if they crash, so be it. But more importantly, they're following your very precise track. Every little turn around these bushes, they're going to mimic that. And their hope is that if you can get through it, they can get through it. After all, they're usually about the size of your palm, so it's not too hard to be able to pull it off. Versus this thing is much bigger and is much more sensitive to its surrounding and thus will be much more cautious in getting through here. Now, obviously, it's a bit silly to start bringing this big drone into this small space like this. And in my testing out in wider spaces, it's pretty good for that. As you saw though, some areas like the orbits and stuff, it just really is hesitant to do. Anyways, I am super excited that Mavic 4 survived the gauntlet, mainly because I didn't want to deal with the care refresh process, which is very, very straightforward and easy, but I need to get one to have a broken drone today. So, uh, woo, no broken drones. With that, I have plenty more unsponsored Mavic 4 content coming up, where I tell it like it is, including a Mavic 4 complete beginner's guide, where I'll walk through all the features on this, which ones work well, like the camera systems and which ones don't work well, like the whole like shutting and closing thing, never worked at all. Anyways, hit subscribe, that way you get that video as soon as it happens. With that, have a good one.